So here I have a ball which I'm going to send down the roller coaster. And you'll notice if I put the ball up high, it goes down, it makes the loop, and everything's good and jolly. If I put the ball too low, oh, it doesn't make the loop. So at some point, it'll just barely make the point. Sorry, at some point, it'll just barely make the loop. And at any point below that, it won't. Any point above that, it will. Can we find that point? What is that height we need the ball to be at in order to make the loop? We can do that. So here's a, a diagram of the situation, and here's the ball, and it has some mass with the symbol m, and some size with the radius r, and we'll start it at some height above the lowest point of the loop, and that's the height that we want to find. Now, this is different than the previous video, because we're taking into account the rolling motion of the ball. And you can apply this to real roller coasters with wheels just by substituting in that moment of inertia in place of the ball's moment of inertia. Let's solve the problem. So we're going to start with energy conservation. That is the initial energy equals the final energy. Well, initially, the ball's not moving, so it has no kinetic energy. It's all potential energy. So let's put that in here for the uh, potential energy at the top. Now, we want to know what is this minimum height so that the ball can make the loop. So we're going to solve for the final energy at this point. And the final energy here has to have some kinetic energy because in order to make the loop, the centripetal acceleration at the top must be greater than or equal to the acceleration of gravity. To find the minimum height, We'll put in the minimum centripetal acceleration. And centripetal acceleration is just V squared over R, uh, capital R for the radius of the loop. And we can then solve for V squared must be the radius of the loop multiplied by the acceleration of gravity. That's the minimum speed the ball must have at the top in order to make the loop. Let's continue over here. So in the final state, we, we have, well, we have potential energy, call that U2. But we also have kinetic energy, mv squared, where this v has to be this. And we have kinetic energy of rotation. Excellent. Now, what is this potential energy at the top? Well, it's a distance of 2r up. So we can put that in here, mg2r. And then here, the initial potential energy, well, that's mgh, the height that we start at. So great. Let's plug some things in. Now, first of all, we're going to assume the ball, the ball is rolling without slipping. If something is rolling without slipping, then we know that its linear speed will equal the radius of the ball multiplied by its angular velocity. So rearranging this equation, I can solve for the angular speed, which is just v over r. So this is a, an aside, if you like. And now I can plug this in here. And let's uh, write it all out again mg2r, the height, plus the translational kinetic energy, one-half mv squared, plus the rotational kinetic energy, which is one-half the moment of inertia of the ball, which is um, two-fifths mr squared, multiplied by its speed over radius both squared, since the angular speed is squared here. And now, I can do some cancellation here. So these guys cancel. And if I multiply 1 half times 2 fifths, the 2's cancel. And let's uh, reduce some terms. So this is 2mgr here. And I have a 1 half plus a 1 fifth. You can do the math at home, but one half plus one fifth, well, it's a five tenths and a two tenths, so that's seven tenths. 
seven tenths m v squared and m g h on this side. Great. So now we can plug in for v squared because we know v squared, in order for it to just barely make the loop, has to equal radius of the loop times the acceleration of gravity. So plugging that in here, we get a g r there. And now we can combine these two terms. And I'll do that over here on the sideboard. Well, what do we have? A 7 tenths here and a 2 there. So let's do the fraction. Well, the common denominator is 10, so that'll be 20 over 10 plus 7 over 10. That's 27 tenths. Well, great. Now we have MGH equals 27 tenths mgr. And we see that the mg's cancel on both sides. And we finish the problem. The height that the ball must start at is equal to 27, 27 tenths times the radius of the loop. And again, since I plugged in two-fifths in R squared, we're talking about a solid ball here. A hollow ball would be a two-thirds in R squared, because it, it has a different moment of inertia. So here's our answer for a solid ball starting up at some height h. In order to just barely make the loop, you need to start it at 27 tenths times the radius of the loop. Let's check if this really works. Theory is theory, but the experiment is what tells the tale. So first I'll measure the loop. And the loop is, oh, let's turn around for easier viewing. The loop is 22 diameter. So that's a radius of 11 centimeters. Great. And then the loop's lowest point starts at 14 centimeters from the ground, so I'll add 14 centimeters to whatever height I get in order to know where to place the ball. Well, if I plug 11 centimeters in here, 27 times 11, that's 297. So I get 297 centimeters divided by 10. Well, let's just call it 30 centimeters. 29.7. So I need to go 30 centimeters from the bottom of the loop. We measure the bottom of the loop to be 14. So if I go up to 44, the ball ought to just barely make the loop. So here's my 44 point, and let's see. Woohoo! Made the loop. Now let's go a little bit lower. So we'll go down to 42. Oh, doesn't make it. Looks like we did it right. 